In this video, we're going to give you an overview of the vCarve Pro software from Vectric. We're going to give you an idea of what the software does, a sample of what people make with it, and a guide to the typical process for going from an idea to making something with your CNC. So what exactly is vCarve Pro? Basically, it's a software program that allows you to create 2D and vCarve designs and then from those designs calculate the code that will allow you to cut them on a CNC machine. In terms of the range of Vectric software, VCar Pro includes all the functionality of the Cut2D program. The software is designed to drive a 3-axis CNC router. That also includes 3-axis machines that have the ability to wrap one of the axes around an indexer or what's referred to as a rotary axis. From a technical point of view, VCarve Pro allows you to do a number of things. First of all, when you're designing, there's a comprehensive set of 2D vector drawing tools and editing functions, as well as the ability to import 2D vector data from other design programs, and they could be a CAD program such as AutoCAD or TurboCAD, or a more drawing-oriented program like Corel Draw or Adobe Illustrator, or one of many others. It also lets you import photos or images that you may have scanned or have on your computer and to use those as a basis to help you create your vector design. So from a more technical point of view, what exactly does VCarve Pro do? First of all, to help you create your design, there's a comprehensive set of drawing and editing functions, as well as the ability to import vector data from other drawing programs and also to import photos or images to help you create 2D vectors. Once you've got your design, then there's a large selection of toolpaths to choose from. These include 2D toolpaths like profiling, pocketing and drilling, and what's typically referred to as 2.5D toolpaths like v-carving, texturing and many more. In addition to the toolpaths we can calculate inside of the software, we also have the ability to import 3D toolpaths from other Vectric programs such as Cut3D and VectorArt3D Machinist in order to combine these with the toolpaths within VCarve Pro itself. Once we have our toolpaths, then we have a really nice way to preview those so we can see exactly what you're going to machine before you get to the CNC, in addition to the ability to add colours to it so you can get a realistic rendering as the one you can see there in the last image on the slide. Once we're happy that our toolpaths look correct, then we save those out to our CNC machine and we can run the part that we've been designing and creating toolpaths for. In a moment we'll expand on some of these steps when we look at the typical workflow for creating parts with the software. Before that I'd like to take a look at some examples of the type of work that can be done with VCarve Pro. All the images I'm going to show you were taken from the Vectric user forum. On this slide you can see a range of examples from decorative inlays in a tabletop through to cabinet panel processing, the imported toolpath for the eagle and the decorative stand from a church. The house sign was actually one of the Vectric monthly projects that we give away free on the website. If you're interested in that you can sign up for our newsletter to get more details about how to receive those. On the next slide we have a selection of sign making examples and you can see these vary from simple cut-out shapes all the way through to parts that have detailed textured backgrounds and even with the horse there another imported 3D toolpath that's been combined with the other toolpaths in VCarve Pro. Great deal of flexibility with the types of materials and shapes that you can cut with the software and your CNC router. On a final slide of examples we have a more eclectic mix of parts that people have made with the software. You can see the wing ribs there from a model aeroplane, a building from a model railway, a very modern looking birdhouse, a simple metal part, a wooden clock, a Corian engraving, and then finally at the bottom there you can see somebody that's made a whole bunch of parts with the software and then assembled them to make a model of a science fiction gun. The things we've shown you over the last three slides were designed to give you an idea of the flexibility of the software but are still just a small example of what's possible with VCarve Pro and your CNC machine. Now we've talked about what the software can do and we've given you an idea of the type of things people make. 
What I'd like to do now is explain the working process in order to get from your design to the finished part on the CNC. The first stage of our process is the design and this in itself is broken up into a number of smaller stages. The first of which is developing the concept. Now this may take the form of just an idea that you have in your head of something that you'd like to make or it may be something that you're creating for a customer and they may be able to provide you with data in order to help you design it. That may take the form of vectors that have been designed in another software program or it may be sketches or photographs that they can supply to you that you can import into the software to help you base your drawing on. Once we have the concept, the next thing is to set up our job in VCAR Pro to define the sizes and also to define how we plan to orient it on the CNC. Once we've done that, we can import any appropriate data that we've got, whether it's our own data or whether it's something from the customer. And then from that, we can derive our vectors. If we don't have any data to import, then VCAR Pro has a full set of drawing tools that we can use in order to create our vectors. Finally, we may need to do some editing and organization with the information in order to get it ready to actually be able to calculate the toolpaths on. On the next stage, we're going to actually create the data that will drive the CNC machine. Therefore, the first job, which is very important, is going to be to check our material setup that we have set in the program against the CNC and how we're planning to set up our material on there. That's checking that the size is right and also things like the position we're going to tell the CNC in order to reference the job from is the same as what we've indicated in the program. Next, we might check our available tooling to see what we have available to cut our part, although it's typically good to be aware of that before you start the design. But from that, we can go ahead and calculate our toolpaths. The toolpaths are calculated by selecting different vectors within the design and choosing different toolpath strategies appropriate to the shapes you want to create when you cut the part. The resulting toolpaths will be displayed as blue lines within the 3D view of the software. You can see an example of that in the picture on the slide. Now while these lines are mathematically important because they're the exact path that the router is going to follow when it cuts this path, they're not very easy to see exactly what they mean in terms of the finished product. So the next stage of the process is very important because the preview within the software will actually let you take those toolpaths and it will animate them in a virtual piece of material using the tool shape and the geometry that you specified in order to let you see a representation of what the part should look like when you actually cut it. The key benefits of this are that you can check that the parts look correct and also make sure you haven't made any mistakes in which you would cause an error in what you were actually trying to cut and that's very important because it'll help you save wasted time and material because you can solve these problems before you get out to the machine and see them actually happen um, on the part that you're cutting. There's a second benefit though and that's that you can actually save these images and you even have the ability in the software to colour areas if you want to differentiate them or effectively show something that looks rendered if the part's going to be painted or to delete the waste material which allows you to remove parts of the stock that won't be on the finished part so that you can create an image like the one you can see at the bottom of the slide there and perhaps email that to your customer to give them a really good idea of what the thing you're making for them is going to look like. It can't be overstated how important this preview stage is. Assuming you set everything up correctly on the machine, then what you see here is what you're going to get when you run these toolpaths. As such, you should only proceed once you're happy with what you see in the preview is correct and what you expect to be cutting. At that stage, you are ready though to move on to the saving stage. At this point, we're going to take our toolpaths and we're going to choose either individual ones or we may group them together, perhaps in groups where they share the same tool or we'll group them all together if we have an automatic tool changer. And we're going to tell the software how to format them for the machine. To do this, we choose from a list of post processors. The post processor is what's going to take the data from within the software. It's going to take the toolpath moves and it's going to format them. So your CNC control is going to understand that and translate it into physical moves that's actually going to cut the part. Within the software itself, we have hundreds of different post processors to choose from. And once you have found the one that works for your machine, then you're able to just leave that because the software will remember it for next time you come to save your toolpaths. 
Once we've chosen the post processor to format the data, then we save the toolpaths onto the hard drive and transfer those out to the CNC machine. And then we're able to actually go ahead and run those in order to cut our final part. And we're just left with any finishing we want to do on it. Hopefully at this point, we've given you enough of a taste of the software that you're excited to start working with it. If you bought a copy of VCarve Pro, or perhaps received it as part of a package with your CNC machine, then go ahead and install it and start working with the software immediately. If you don't own a copy of the software, then you can download a free trial from the Vectric website. And either way, the next thing would be to start working through the videos and the documentation, practice with the software and cut some sample files to really understand how easy it is to use, but also how flexible and powerful the software is. In addition to the tutorials, we also have a lot of other resources available to help you get the most from VCarve Pro. Within the software itself, you can access the reference manual that you can browse through in order to find information on the specific functions and icons. Online we have the user forum which is a brilliant resource for information and also a great place to ask questions about everything from the software through to materials, tooling and different techniques people use for finishing. Also online we have our support website which gives you access to the training material, to the forum, to the free monthly projects, to program updates and also the FAQ or frequently asked questions section which is a great place to look up information or to find out specifics about the software. Finally there's also a link on there to contact Vectric if you have a question you'd like our support department to help with. So that almost concludes our VCarve Pro overview. We hope you enjoy using the software and that you'll get involved in the Vectric community, whether it's by downloading one of our free monthly projects, joining the Vectric forum or attending one of our user group meetings. Thanks for watching.